Well, hello there. How are you? My name is Codon, and I'm here to guide you through this exciting creative code play experience for the Hour of Code. So let's get started. To do this, we're going to use scratch.mit.edu, this website right here. So you'll just need your Chromebook or laptop to log into that. And you'll know you've made it if it looks like this. Again, scratch.mit.edu. It'll look just like this and they even have three little tutorials waiting for you to look at. But today I'm going to guide you on my own. So join me as we create our own projects. See the word create right up there? I'll show you even with both hands right out there. Oh, look at that behind my head. I'm pretty good, aren't I? Pretty good. So let's get started with the next step. So once you click that create button, you'll see my mouse here. Click create and voila, we'll have a blank project for creating our fun theme today, which I'm going to call interactive face. So we can go ahead and close uh, this window here. You can see the close over there and just click on that. You can explore that some other time. But today I wanted to get started to just kind of show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to slide down here to the bottom. So now you um, can see what it looks like with the blocks of code over here. We're going to drag it into the coding space here. And way over there, my arm can't even reach, is where you're going to see your code play out. All right, let's start with creating our face. We're going to use sprites, these characters here. I want to get rid of the scratch cat. So let's click that trash can and delete it. We're going to place a face using four sprites, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. So let me show you how you do that. Let's choose a sprite right here. See how that blue circle with the cat icon appears? Just click there and lots of choices. You can scroll. You can see me scrolling here. Lots of choices to pick from. I want to use the theme. There are animals, people, fantasy, dance, music is what I'm going to do for my face. So decide what sprites you want to create. I'm hoping your face looks completely different from the one I create today. So I am going to put a trumpet by clicking on the trumpet. Look at that. It's even animated. That's going to be my nose. I'm going to drag that into the middle of the screen. I'm clicking and dragging it. Now I need two eyes. So let's go back and pick the next sprite down here. Click on that and click music. That's my theme. I want to use, hmm, what do you suggest? Maybe a drum snare or a drum for an eyeball. I know what guitar eyes yes i'm gonna put this one as this eye and i'm gonna pick the next one so you go ahead and pick yours it'll take a while to decide but you can see what i'm doing look there's my nose i've picked my eyes and now i need one more sprite to be my mouth let's see what should i choose i want something across so maybe i'll make the trumpet in my mouth since it's horizontal and look how i'm changing my mind as we go along that's the best part of coding is you create what you want and sometimes as you go along new ideas come to you from friends classmates who knows what inspires you but there's my face okay that i've chosen i have an eye two eyes a nose a mouth now this back part area here is called the stage behind the musical instruments. My arm can't even reach all the way over there from where I'm at. So I want to show you down here. If you look at my mouse, 
you can see I'm going to choose a backdrop. It's right next to choose a sprite, but I'm going to choose a backdrop. Lots of backdrops to pick from. So go ahead and pick yours. I'm looking at the music theme. Ooh, I might put my face in a theater. Whoa, there it is at the theater. I like it. I like it. And if you ever decide you want a different one, you can just pick more. Suppose you picked a baseball field to just look at it. Suppose you've decided, nah, I want a different stage. So what you can do is click on stage. See how stage turned blue over here? And then I go to my backdrops tab here. And there are the ones I've chosen. There was that blank one. In the beginning, I'm going to delete. There's my theater, my baseball. I'm going to stick with my theater for now. Okay, let's go back to the code. You're learning so much already about computer science, you don't even realize it. Now, to make it interactive, I want something to happen when someone clicks my nose. So, what is your nose sprite? Mine is the microphone, so I have to click on it here. Each sprite is like a little robot that needs its own instructions. Computers don't know what you want them to do until you tell it what to do. So that's what makes you a coder. You're creating and deciding what the computer will do. So select your nose sprite. You'll know you've selected it. And what we're going to do is here in the middle, we're going to put the commands and you see some of the commands here in blue. You see some all the way along here as well. And we're going to drag those out into this area. So I'd like to make my nose. Let's see if I could make it turn. I'm dragging that block out, putting it here. If I click on the block, look, it makes my nose turn once. But I want it to spin around. Let's make it turn many times. So you'll notice if I click on these different blocks of colors, it shows me many different instructions. So this control instruction is really handy. There's a repeat. You can tell the computer to not just turn 10 times. See how I'm dragging this inside? Let it click. And now if I try it, it turns 10 times. I'll give you a little secret. If I say 24 with a 15 degree turn, it'll do a full turn. I like it. Now, what's, how do we make it interactive? So this is the part that's pretty cool to me. You're going to use one of these orange, sorry, one of the yellow event blocks all the way up there. You see the yellow up there? You can follow my mouse. There's an event block. So it's the third one down. We want to tell the computer when someone clicks this sprite and see how I can let go here and it snaps together. If you ever want to take it apart, you just drag down, drag down. See how all the commands come apart? Snap it together. Now we've told the computer, hey, when this sprite is clicked, this is what we want it to do. Yo, now somebody could play your part. What if they did it full screen? There's full screen mode. Did you see those full arrows? If I click the four arrows, it goes full screen. This is how someone's going to play your program. And they're going to click the microphone to find out what's happening. That works. So you've written your first pieces of code. You are to be congratulated. So way to go. I'm really proud of you for getting this far. Now, let's do something with the eyes. This is where you start getting to decide what is it you'd like to do. I'm going to show you a couple ideas, but it's up to you to create the fun program interactive face that you'd like to. So let's make, let's see, the mouth. My mouth is the trumpet. So watch what happens when I click on the trumpet. Boom, the code is gone. What? That's because we didn't tell the trumpet what to do yet. But if we want to see the code for the microphone, my nose, there it is. Remember I told you each sprite is like its own robot? Well, each robot has to be told what to do. So I want to tell the trumpet to say something. So here's where I'm going to go back to these different uh, types of blocks. I'm going to click all the way up top 
on the looks block. And if you notice, I can say hello for two seconds. But I'm going to change what it says. Instead of hello, I'm going to type in here because I'm the coder. I want to say hi. Let's play for two seconds. Now, let's see. If I click on the trumpet, it doesn't work. The microphone works. What have we forgotten? What have we forgotten? Coding is about making lots of mistakes. And I've forgotten something. No big deal. I forgot the event. Anybody remember which event it was? Here it is in events. One, two, yes. Good job. When this sprite is clicked, snap them together. Let's test it. Let's play. Ooh, now I'm going to show you something that is also cool. Did you notice this block here? It says sound. Look at the commands for sounds. All right, this is where you're going to have to turn your volumes down a little bit on your laptops. But this is super fun. There's a sound from my sprite. It's going to be different than your sprite. So that's what I like is you get to explore and find out what the different sounds are there. Mine, mine is going to play a trumpet. I'm going to drag it and say, you know what? After I say, hi, let's play for two seconds, let's play the trumpet. Let's try it. Hey, it worked. Did you hear that? The trumpet sound. If you want to know what it sounds like, just click on the block. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, so I've made the mouth interactive. Hey, let's play. Suppose I just want it to appear for one second. Look at that. I just changed it here. And the words are only there for one second. And it plays the trumpet. All right, we have a spinning nose. We have a talking mouth. What do you want the eyes to do? Remember, I click on the sprite for this eye on the left. This is my red guitar. We haven't told the computer what to do. Let's check out these looks commands. There's one I'd like to show you. I urge you to explore all of them to see if you can figure out what they do. But if you scroll down, you'll notice I'm scrolling. This is a cool one. Change color effect. Drag that out into the middle. And what else do we need to make it happen when someone clicks on it? You're right. We need the event for when this sprite is clicked. Now, you'll notice we said when this one's clicked, change the color effect by 25. What does that do? Let's try it. Whoa, my guitar is changing colors. I kind of like that. Now, suppose I don't want a 25. What does 5 do? Let's try it. Oh, it changes very slightly, little by little. You notice those shades? So you get to control how much of a color change there is. So I'm trying 15. I kind of like 15. So I'm going to leave that for that one. Let's see what kind of sound I have. Oh, this one's electric guitar. Let's try that. Oh, nice. I've got a little question for you. What happens if I use this control block again? Do you remember this block that repeats the commands? Let's put these two. Look at this. Ah, We need to drag them inside the repeat. The computer will repeat whatever commands you put inside of here. So I'm putting these two inside the repeat and now attaching it. What do you think will happen? Let's try it full screen. Woohoo! It's playing 10 times. What about my nose? Whoa, what about my mouth? What are we missing? We're missing something for our eye, our other eye. Now, if you don't want it to keep playing, you can click stop. And I'm just going to have it repeat three times. So you don't have to have it repeat 10 times. But that's, that's my interactive face decision. So you get to make your own choices. That's what's really important about coding is everyone decides how they'd like to create their project. So I'm missing one more interactive piece, 
which is this eye here. So I click on that sprite. See if we ever want to look at the code. We just click on the sprites and see their code. And we need to add something here. So this one, I'd like you to see some cool motion. So if we go to the motion blocks way up top and scroll to something called, whoops, I'm sorry, you don't even have to scroll. I thought I had to scroll, but I missed. The command is right here. Glide to random position. And then there's glide to this little spot here. I'll show you. See this? So this is my X and Y position. I'm at X80 and 55. That tells the computer where to put that guitar. So I'm going to drag that over first. That's my starting spot. So I glide to there. And then I want you to do this first. Glide to a random position on the screen and then glide back. Whoa, there goes my guitar. Whoa, how come it goes to a different place each time? It goes to a random position, but it always glides back to that starting position. Well, what happens if you had forgotten the starting position block? Yikes, my eyeball. It needs to go back on my face. That's what this command does. Remember that starting position I had? All right, now remember, your X and Y is going to be different because it depends on where you put your sprite. What are we missing? The event. I'm going to show you one more little wild card. Hey, what about not when the sprite is clicked, but look at this second event. Did you notice what that says? There's space key, but you could make any, any keyboard key an event. So let's just use the space key for fun as a bonus. So now if I click the space key, whoa, there goes my guitar. Well, suppose you wanted it to go much slower. Well, it doesn't have to glide for one second. You can have it glide for three seconds, four seconds. Let's try it. Oh, space key press. See, look, I clicked on it. Doesn't work because I have to click the space key. There it is. Four seconds glide away and a one second glide back. I kind of like that. I might go with three. So let's see. There's something else I wanted to show you. This is the wild card. But what if we still want something to happen when someone clicks? Well, the computer can do more than one thing at once. So I'm still going to use this when Sprite is clicked. And I just want it to say, um, you are the best for one second. I'm changing it to one second. And then I'm going to have it play a sound, the electric guitar. That happens if I'm if I click on it. But if I hit the space key, it flies. If I click the mouth, it's interactive. If I spin my nose. So this is just the beginning for you. I hope you have fun on this hour of code and realize that look at all the things you can create. There are motion blocks for you to explore. There are looks and sounds to explore. If you'd like to explore more sounds, they're right up here. If you click the sounds tab and go to this blue circle, there are many sounds to choose from. So I'll let you play with those, but I just thought it would be great to have a fun start to creating with code. And remember, this is just the beginning. There's so much more, and I'm super excited to see what it is that you might create. So thanks for joining me. I'd like to say you are the best. And I hope you have a wonderful hour of code and thank your teacher for making time in your fun, busy day to learn, think. And I like to say, you can see him typing here, code on. Bye bye.